All right, I'm gonna give everyone about 15 seconds to jump on here and then we're gonna get started. Seeing people trickle in here. All right, looks like we have a pretty big number here. So we'll get going. So hello and welcome everyone to today's Reputation Matters, the no cost method of growing your practice webinar. My name is Jacob Borkover here on the webinar team at Rectangle Health and just want to thank everyone for taking time out of their days to be here with us. Um, we know you've got a lot going on and busy practices, so um, appreciate everyone joining us here today. So before we jump into things, a few quick housekeeping items. This is a one hour, one CE credit course. We are PACE accredited through the Academy of General Dentistry to provide CE. So in order to get those CE credits, there's going to be a few polling questions that pop up throughout the presentation. Um, just make sure you're answering them. We need to verify that you are here and um, paying attention. So make sure when those come up that you're answering them. And then also make sure that you're on for the duration of the presentation. If there's anyone from your practice who isn't here, uh, couldn't make it today that registered, just know if they watch the recording, they will not be eligible for the CE. So um, you're more than happy. Uh, you're more than welcome to pass along that uh, recording to them, but they will not get the CE. Um, in terms of CE, I always get asked the question, a million times, but you will be getting CE credits sent to you within the next two weeks via email. Whatever email you registered from is where you will get your CE. Um, if you don't see it within two weeks, make sure to check your spam or your junk. Um, and if not, you can reach out to our webinar team and we'll be sure to get you taken care of. Those CE credits will come from Nora Dowling on our webinar team. Um, if you are joining on mobile today, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you're able and um, you're able to access those polling questions when prompted. And if you can get to a desktop, we do always recommend that for a better webinar viewing experience. And then any questions at all today, feel free to email us, webinar at rectanglehealth.com, or um, also you can uh, place something in the chat and we'll be sure to um, answer your question as soon as we can. Um, and last but not least, we're going to have a survey at the end. Please fill that out so we know how we're doing. Um, Dr. Austin always wants feedback on his presentations as well, so he can continue to improve. Um, so make sure you're filling those out. And then, um, yeah, we're really excited to have everyone here today. So um, one last thing, we will be sending out a follow-up email that's going to come your way tomorrow. Um, that's going to contain a handout that has information from the presentation today and then also a uh, link to the recording. So with that, I'm really excited to introduce our speaker today, um, Dr. Austin. Dr. Austin is a graduate of the University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio Dental School. He served five years as faculty before establishing his full-time private practice in San Antonio, Texas. Throughout his career, he has received numerous awards, such as New Dentist of the Year from the Texas Academy of General Dentistry, and he's a friend of ours here at Rectangle Health, and we are very excited to have him presenting with us today. So with that, Dr. Austin, I'm going to send it into you. The floor is yours. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I uh, hope everyone is well tonight. And uh, first off, just want to thank Rectangle Health for uh, putting this webinar on. I uh, really couldn't do it without them. Uh, I want to think back to when you started your practice. Um, maybe it was more recently, maybe it was back when Roger Staubach was a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, who knows when it was. I'll tell you a little bit about the story of mine. Uh, my practice started 15 years ago um, and had the typical trajectory of a young clinician, worked for a couple years um, with another clinician and then decided to start my own practice um, about three years later. And I found the perfect spot for my practice is right off a major highway here. You can see a drone shot of my building, great visibility. Literally, the traffic just stops for no reason in front of my building. And so at any given time, I can look out my windows and just see a pile of cars just sitting there staring at my building. Um, this is in the area that I grew up in, basically in the same zip code that I went to high school in. So I knew I had kind of a set base of potential patients before I ever, ever even opened my door. Um, I had a business plan in place that I worked on for a couple of years. I had a team that I needed. I had my CPA and my attorney had my real estate broker. And finally, I had my lender all set up and I applied for my note and it got approved and I asked for $450,000 and I got $450,000. So we were off and going and this happened to be 2008 and four days into my build out, um, the peripheral stuff hit the fan on Wall Street and markets were plummeting. Um, basically, we just hit the greatest financial collapse since the, since the Great Depression. And one Tuesday morning, my cell phone rang, and it was Chad from my lending bank. Chad. First off, is there a, another name that conjures up an image of a person more than Chad? 
maybe Karen, Karen would maybe be the one, but Chad is definitely like your fraternity brother, part-time weed dealer version of, of Karen for sure. Never bank with a Chad. Let me tell you that much. Imagine what you think Chad looks like in your mind. I want you to close your eyes and think of what Chad the banker would look like. And I want to see if my Chad the banker looks like what you imagine Chad the banker to be. It's kind of like one of those magic tricks where I have you pick your card. All righty. Is this your Chad? Is this the Chad you had? This is definitely the Chad you had. This is the most Chad that has ever chatted in the history of Chad's. So Chad calls me on a Tuesday morning. And I pick up the phone and Chad says, like in the most Chad way possible, bruh, I got news for you, bruh. I'm like, bruh, really? Like I'm your banking client, like not your golfing buddy. Uh, I was like, Chad, what's up? He's like, I got good news and bad news, bruh. The good news, the loan is still on, bruh. The bad news is we have to knock $50,000 off the note. Max we can do is 400K, bruh. Bruh, 50K off? All right. Well, construction's already started. Equipment and supplies are kind of necessities. I can't cut back there. So what can I cut out of my business plan? And so I went line through line through it. And the only spot I could find where we could make up the 50K was in two places, working capital and marketing. So the second half of my business plan was basically garbage. Uh, and so now we're doing this on a shoestring budget. And how do we make this happen? And around the same time as the Chad phone call, I read an article from the ADA, Health Policy Institute, that said that 71% of dentists in the United States have a competing dentist practicing within one mile of them. One mile. And I immediately became terrified, like at the beach, in the water, and a big shadow swims by, terrified. Like on the slow uphill climb of a chain-driven roller coaster, terrified. Like staring down from the top of an observation deck, terrified. Like I'm late, terrified. Okay. That's how terrified it was. So now my new office is in a cherry spot and there's not anybody around it for miles. And what am I going to do when someone else opens around the corner? It was a constant fear. Anytime I saw new construction near my office, I immediately freaked out like, oh my God, that's going to be a dental office. What am I going to do? Literally like the construction project could have a drive through window and golden arches. And I would just be like, oh my God, it's going to be you know, mixed smiles. I don't know what it, I mean, it's going to be a dental office. And for years, nothing happened. No one opened around me. Nothing ever popped up. And finally, like a floodgate, literally three GP offices opened within a one mile radius of my practice. And guess what? Nothing happened. I actually only got busier. How could that be? How could it be that not one, not two, three dental offices opened within a mile of me and I not notice any change in patient flow? How can I not notice any decrease in new patient numbers? How? Well, it comes down to one simple answer. I differentiated my practice from them. These practices did not offer the same value proposition my practice did. And I had, unbeknownst to me, set my practice apart. Well, how did I do it? Not by any stroke of genius. It was really just a lot of experimenting and lucky mistakes. But what stuck was the things that I'm going to share with you today. Ways that help me stand out from the dentists around me and the practices around me. Will that exact formula work for you? Probably not, but I think the exercise of thinking about this and trying different things is probably the most valuable part. Simply spending time thinking on how your practice can stand apart from the others around you makes a huge difference. This is kind of the puzzle piece we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about each of these little things just a little bit because I do think they are all important. At the end of the day, you want your practice to be in the Google 3 pack. This is it. If you get in the Google three pack, there is at least a 33% chance that you are getting a phone call from a patient when they Google the most often search term for someone looking for a dentist, dentist near me. And it uses geolocation on their phone. And all you want to do is put yourself right up here in the three pack. So we're going to talk about ways to get you on the three pack without costing you a bunch of money, which I think is important. We're going to talk about three things today, research, reviews themselves, and resilience. What do you do if and when you get a bad review? So let's start with research. There's a lot of research about reviews. Um, and the reason I start with reviews is actually, if we go back here to the three pack, you know, I say that there's a 33% chance that I get this phone call from a new a prospective new patient searching, but it's actually way more than that. It's way more than that because I've differentiated myself from these two dentists based on the number of reviews that I have. 
So it's actually probably more like a 75% chance that I'm getting the first phone call. Now, certainly if I screw it up, one of these other two offices is going to get the phone call. But I think the way that you separate yourself is with reviews. And that's also a way that you end up on the three pack. So that's why we're going to talk about these first, because I think that's really, really important. When we talk about the research related to reviews, there's a landmark paper that was done by a guy named Michael Luca at Harvard Business School. And uh, the studies available on the Harvard Business School website, basically what he found is he studied it on Yelp and Google, found the exact same thing on both, was that if you raise your star rating by one star on either Google or Yelp, it will lead to an increase of 5 to 9% in revenue without spending an extra dollar on marketing. So if you have a million dollar practice and you go up on one star uh, on Google or Yelp, you'll do an extra fifty to $90,000 worth of dentistry for free without having to pay a marketing company to do anything for you. That's how important these are for your practice. This is how patients find a dentist nowadays. It is no longer the bridge game. It is no longer the sewing circle. It is Google and Yelp. And so you need to be putting um, resources into making sure that you're building up that online reputation on Google and Yelp. Consumer, uh, this is uh, data from Nielsen uh, Research. Uh, this is cons uh, consumer opinions posted online, basically reviews. 60, the green number, 66, 66% of people trust uh, what they read online from someone they don't know, basically a review. So 66% of people will trust what they read online about you from someone they don't know. Do you know what they're reading? You need to. As a business owner, it is your responsibility to know all the words that are out there about you. The purple number underneath it, 69%, is percentage of people who will take action based on what they read online. So 69%, basically 70%, seven, seven out of 10 patients, prospective patients will pick up the phone and make an appointment with your practice based on what they read online about you from someone that they don't know. You have to know what's out there and we have to be working to build that because this is how people pick their dentist. Now you may be thinking that this has to do with ages, right? Obviously, yes, older patients aren't going to be like this. Older patients are going to ask their golf circle or their uh, sewing circle or their golf foursome who their dentist is. But this is all younger people, right? I don't know. Let's look at the data and let's see. So let's look at the third row down, consumer opinions posted online. I don't really care about Gen Z. Gen Z comes in at 63%. I don't really care about Gen Z because for the most part, unless they're an older Gen Z, they're probably not making their healthcare decisions. They're still going where mom and dad goes. They're still on mom and dad's insurance. Mom and dad still pays for their visit. So I'm not super excited about marketing towards them, although we're getting to the point where Gen Z is um, getting old enough now. The older ones, for sure, are getting old enough to make their own, their own healthcare decisions. I mean, they call them Gen Z because the Z stands for a zombie because all they do is stare at their phone all day. I mean, look at the stock photo uh, model that's that they have pictures. She can't even take two seconds to look up from her TikTok to take this photo. She's glued to her phone all the time. Uh, millennials, I do care about 70% of millennials will pick up the phone and make an appointment with your dental practice based on what they read online about you. 69% of Gen Xers, um, I'm a Gen Xer by the very tail end. I'm at the very tail end of Gen Xers, basically the same as millennials. So when you look at that right there, like that's a huge part of a practice is millennials and Gen Xers. Finally, we get to ones where like you may, may be thinking this, this isn't it, uh, baby boomers. 60% of baby boomers will make an appointment with you based on what they read online about you from someone they don't know. And then finally, silent generation, which I didn't even know existed. So they do their, they, they do what they say they do. They're silent. Um, my mom's in the silent generation. Um, and uh, she lives in a senior living center across the highway. And uh, she thinks that Yelp is the sound that you make when you stub your toe in the middle of the night. Like she has no idea what Yelp is. But by statistics, you know, the lady that lives next door to her picks her doctor, picks her dentist, picks her hair salon, picks her nail salon, picks her spa, picks her podiatrist, picks a restaurant she's going to tomorrow based on Google or Yelp. So there's really no practice in the world that can avoid this. And unless you're the only dentist in town, this stuff matters. And what happens is this stuff really becomes the center of your marketing universe. So there's a practice that's near me that does a lot of direct mail. And actually, and, and I live close to my office, so I get their direct mailers when they send them out. And I always bring it to the office um, when we get it because I know that our phone's going to ring more when they do direct mail. I don't do direct mail at all, but they do. Um, and so how does that work? Like I've tried to figure this out a ton of times. Um, and so I think I finally figured out that what happens is that people in my neighborhood get the direct mail piece. 
and then they Google the dentist's name and they see their reviews and they maybe read a few of them and then they click on the other reviews of practices in the area and they stumble on mine who has more reviews. So no matter what you do, 1-800-DENTIST, SEO, your website, direct mail, anything, any marketing you do, patients always want that sort of social proof to make sure that it's the right place for them before they make the appointment. And so what happens is, is the gravity of the reviews tend to suck everything in towards it. So it gets to the point where you don't even have to do any other marketing anymore when you get your practice position where it needs to be with reviews, because that does all the marketing for you. At the end of the day, that's the last thing that people check. And if you're doing well there, you're going to get a bunch of patients in and a bunch of patient phone calls. And people are always worried about reviews and like, oh my God, I, you know, what does my patient know about an Emacs crown on number three? How are they going to know, you know uh, if it's a good one or not? Like, how can they review me? And it's because they're not reviewing your dentistry. They're reviewing the way that you and your team made them feel when they were in the dental office. This is a heat chart from every word used on Yelp in 2022. The bigger and darker the word, the more times it's used. I've never seen margin on this list. I've looked really hard lots before. I've looked for maximum intercuspation. I've looked for fourth generation bonding agent. I've never seen any of those technical dental words on here. I've never seen any technical word on here. What do you see? Friendly, helpful, nice, love, awesome, sweet. That's what you see. It's about the way you and your team made them feel. They're not reviewing your dentistry. They're not reviewing your clinical excellence. The patient doesn't know if you are Frank Spear when it comes to prepping crowns or not. What they know is how they feel when they're in your office. That's the important thing. That's the thing that makes a difference with this stuff. So let's talk about reviews themselves. Where do you want them? 800 pound gorilla in the room is Google. Um, about 75% of Google traffic happens on mobile. Um, and so when someone Googles you on mobile, this is kind of what your practice would display when they Google you. And certainly the first thing they see is your practice name. What's the second thing they see? The number of stars you have and the number of reviews they have that you have. So that's literally the second thing that they see about you before it even is like what you do, your number of reviews is shown. That's how important this is to Google. Then after that, you have all of this, what I would call the Google, my business portfolio, your address, your website, your hours, the services that you offer, your, your uh, links to your different socials, all that kind of stuff is kind of housed within the Google My Business platform. When you search on Google, this is the first thing people see uh, on mobile. When people search on the web, uh, people will see something like this. We're all used to seeing this, right? Organic search results on the left and then the Google My Business portfolio on the right. All that same information, all integrated there, Google Maps, hours, website, all that kind of stuff. When you actually get to the actual review part of Google, the one thing I really like about it is that Google makes people put their name on it, you know, their full name, their first name and last name. And that's good for us as dentists, because when people have to put their name on something, they're more likely to be honest and they're more likely to be nice. Anonymity minimizes validity. So any situation where people can be anonymous online it's tough because people are more likely to be mean and trolling and all those kind of things. When someone has to put their name on something, they're more likely to be authentic, honest, and, and open and nice, which is good for us. So that's why I really like Google is that people have to put their name on it. Could someone make a fake Google account and leave you a bad review? Yeah, absolutely. But I think we undervalue how much a Google account is tied to someone's life, like their calendar, their contacts you know, their music purchases, like all that stuff, like they're probably not going to take the time to set up another Google account just to slam you in a bad review. So I think that happens less and less and less. That's what I like about Google is it just makes it, just sets us up for success, which is really, really great. Um, so we talked about reviews for a little bit. I do want to talk about um, the Google My Business uh, portfolio. Um, so again, we talked about the three pack, the importance of the three pack, how the three pack really steers a patient's decisions. And then once you get in the three pack, you know, the persons with the most reviews wins, um, you know, and then not to say that the others aren't going to get calls, they will, um, but kind of after number one screws it up, which believe me happens all the time. Um, how do you get in the three pack? Well, number one is you can Google AdWords your way into it, which is expensive, especially if you're in a metro area like LA or Dallas or Austin or San Francisco uh, or Miami or any Houston, any big city. 
if you try to get the terms in Visalign or veneers, like you're going to be paying $20 a click for those. It's really expensive to get into here and it, it drives that cost up big time. Um, so that's hard, especially if you're in a, in a, in a competitive area. Uh, reviews are free. The more reviews they get, the better chance you have of showing up in the Google free pack. And then finally, by claiming and filling out your Google My Business pro, uh, profile and portfolio and putting activity on there, it helps as well. It lets Google know that you're a real business. And so combined with reviews, you can actually get around the idea of having to pay Google any money to end up there. So Google My Business is really where you want to end up. It's If you haven't claimed this yet, you really need to. Uh, Google.com slash business is the place to go. Um, so just go in, uh, you'll enter in your business name and phone number. They'll call you with a code. You can claim it, type to your Google account. You'll be able to log in. You'll be able to add photos. You'll be able to add your website, hours, all that kind of stuff that you saw. You can add your services, all that stuff. Um, you know, that, that really helps tell Google what you do, therefore um, allows them to display it to the people that are looking for the services that you offer, right? So this is totally free, takes up no time. Uh, be careful, there are scams going around where businesses will call dentists specifically and probably other healthcare providers too, because they know that most of us don't really follow this stuff all that well. And they'll tell you, oh, your Google portfolio is not claimed. You need to pay us to do it for you. Meanwhile, it, you probably have already claimed it, or if not, you can do it yourself without paying anybody to do it. So you don't need to pay anybody to do this. You can do this for free, google.com slash business. Doesn't need to be anything that you pay money for. Yelp is another big uh, play in the market, especially if you're in a cosmopolitan area, LA, Austin, Dallas, Houston, and, and really, and also college towns are big um, with Yelp. Um, you know, look at this. You see the same kind of stuff that you see on the Google My Business, especially on mobile, it's all the same stuff. It's phone number, address, hours, website, all the demographic information. Um, about 90% of, of Yelp traffic happens on mobile, if not more than that. So it's a totally mobile-driven platform. Um, but I totally recommend um, claiming your Yelp profile. Yelp has a bit of a checkered history with dentists, and, and a lot of dentists uh, don't like Yelp which is fine. I totally get it, but you should still claim your Yelp profile, even if you don't advertise with them at all. And the place that you go to do that is biz.yelp.com. You go there and claim same thing as like claiming your Google account. You put in your business name and your phone number. They'll call you with a code. They'll have you set up an account and you're done. Then you get access to the Google My Business um, uh, like uh, dashboard here, which is basically the same thing as the Google My Business dashboard. Um, so you get access to your Yelp for business owners, I'm sorry, um, which is basically the same as the Google My Business dashboard. That's where you put in all your demographic information. You can respond to reviews, uh, change your photos, change your hours, website, all that stuff. This is what you need to control and fill out everything. Um, totally free to do this. Doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to advertise with them uh, in order to be able to do this. Totally free. Highly recommend you do it. When you look at Yelp reviews, one thing you immediately see is that you don't see uh, first and last names here. You see first names. So there's a little bit more anonymity here, which also again means that anonymity minimizes validity. So a little bit less of a uh, uh, valid deal here, but still pretty trusted. Yelpers are Yelpers um, and they trust what they read on there kind of unequivocally. If you look at the bottom of all your Yelp reviews, you'll see a link that says um, X number of other reviews that are not currently recommended. That's because Yelp uses an algorithm to decide if a, if a review is real or not. And so, you know, they, they use a lot of different things to help them determine this, like your activity on the site, how long ago you signed up, how many times you've logged in. Did your phone register a geolocation tag at the actual business? Have you actually been there before? Um, a bunch of things like this. How many reviews you've left before? How long is your review? Um, and reviews that it seems to be sketchy it filters them out and they go to live here if it thinks that it's maybe a little sketchy. So if you have a patient who's never left, who doesn't have a Yelp account and you ask them to leave you a review and they go sign up for Yelp and they leave you a Yelp review and then they never use Yelp again, that looks fishy to Yelp and it's probably going to get filtered out. Yelp kind of only publishes reviews from people who are active Yelp users. So that's one reason why people don't like Yelp. They feel that Yelp holds their reviews hostage um, whether or not they do that and they, they only promote, you know, good reviews when you pay them and all that stuff. They insist that they don't. There have been legal proceedings, court cases and all these kind of things. At the end of the day, you're kind of forced to either trust them or not. 
whether or not you trust them or not doesn't take away the fact that your business appears on Yelp. You can't delete it off of Yelp. It's there. And honestly, you want to know if someone's going to say something bad about you on there. So I just think it's it's worth it to sign up, even if you don't pay them any money, just own it. And then that way you can be notified when you when you get a review, um, you can respond to it if you need to. It just makes sense to me for you to, to claim this. Um, it makes your business look more authentic and real if you've claimed it, as opposed to like, if you just go on there and it just says this business has not been claimed or is unverified. Um, it just looks sketchy that way. So you want to claim it. You don't have to do business with them, but it will make a difference. Um, let's talk about website just for a second, because obviously like what, like everyone has a website, right? But your website's like a utility for your practice. Like I, I, it's not marketing. We don't code it in my accounting software as marketing. We I code it under a utility, so like water and garbage and electricity, right? Cause like you can't function without it. That's what that, that's what a utility means. You can't function without it. And that's how a website is. You have to have one. You absolutely have to. It's got to be mobile compatible. I mean, it has to show up on a mobile phone um, and it has to be uh, like customized to render well on a mobile phone. Um, I think everyone's been to a website that's not necessarily mobile compatible, tried to look at it on an iPhone and it just looks awful, right? So you got to have a mobile compatible website. I think it needs to offer expanded functionality nowadays. People want things like being able to book an appointment online virtual consultations where they can take pictures of themselves and their smile and upload it and get, you know, a report from you on what they think they need. Um, those are the kind of things that people expect nowadays from a website since COVID. And I think it's, it's fairly easy to do those types of things and, and make them uh, make it to where your website does more than just has your, you know, your hours and your, and pictures of your team from four years ago. You know, I, I think, I think it can add way more than that. I think you got to put photos of your cases up there. Um, just, I think you need to have photos of your cases. Um, I, there's a, several dentists in my area who do a ton of advertising and I've never seen a lick of their own dentistry and it just drives me mad. I mean, if you go to my Instagram, you're going to see a bunch of dentistry that I did you go to my website. You see a bunch of dentistry I did. I just think it's hugely important that you can show patients what you did. Um, yeah. Does that mean you got to document your cases? Yes. But documenting your cases makes you a better dentist. So do it and have photos of your cases on your website so patients can see what you do. And Google changes every three to five years. Google changes every day, um, but it changes substantively probably you know, every three years or so. And so what was important for Google in ranking a website three or five years ago is totally different than what it is today. So you got to work with a website company who can update your website under the hood routinely so that you keep on being relevant when Google is searching for a quote unquote dentist near me. Um, let's talk about the last corner of this, which is citations. What is a citation? No, it's not a parking ticket that you get when you park, you know, in the wrong spot on Sunset Boulevard in West Hollywood. Um, a citation is an online reference to a business that features either a name, address, uh, or phone number. Uh, that could also be a web address, right? Um, so this is something to show Google that you're a real business. The way that I equate this to is, um, like a date, like if you're online dating, Right. Um, let's say you're using Tinder and you meet somebody on Tinder and you're interested in maybe going out with them, but you get their name. If you Googled their name and nothing came up, like, would you be sort of like, oh, this, that's weird, right? How could there nothing be about you on Google? The same thing is true with a business. Like if Google doesn't see your name listed in a bunch of other places, it's like, ah, that's strange. Like, I'm not going to go out with that person. That's kind of what Google is looking for with a citation. This is the fact that you should appear in a bunch of places online because you're a business that's open and doing business. Um, so citations are super important for local search, which is what we care about. I don't care for global search. I don't want patients flying in from Los Angeles for me to do their dentistry. It's a pain in everyone's butt. I only want to market to the people that are near me, right? Um, and so that's why local search is so important for dentists. That's why citations are so important because they fuel local search. The more citations you have, the more Google traffic, bottom line. The more citations, the more Google traffic. Uh, important Google citations uh, or important citations. Google My Business is a huge one. Yelp for Business Owners is a big one. That's a high value website. And when Google sees that you have all your stuff listed on Yelp too, and it's the same as what you have on Google, it tells them like, hey, this is a real dental practice that's real listing patients. A Facebook business page. I hate Facebook. I don't even have a Facebook account, but I do have a Facebook business page where it has all that same information. Same thing for Instagram. Same thing for Twitter. I never go on Twitter or X. 
never go on it, but I do have an account for my business so that when face or when Google searches uh, for my name, it shows up that, Hey, yeah, there's a Twitter account for the business. There's an Instagram account for the business. There's a Facebook account for the business, right? One way that you can see what your citations are is a company called Bright Local. They do this for free, brightlocal.com. You can, it runs a search to tell you, are your citations in order? Is all the information the same on all the citations? Which is really, really important. Any errors, what they call NAP errors, name, address, phone numbers. So where if your phone number appears different on some citations than it does others, that it get, calls into question in, in the Google algorithm. Uh, whether or not you're there or not. So you want all that stuff to be kind of the same throughout. Citation campaign um, through uh, Bright Local will help you find those errors and then you can correct them fairly easily. So easy to do, totally free. Uh, spend 20 minutes on Bright Local and you can actually uh, really clean a bunch of stuff up for your business and make it more visible on Google when people search for Dennis near me, which is what you want. Uh, Instagram, I think is important. Got to have an Instagram. It's one of the most used apps in the world. Uh, what do you post on your on your practice Instagram page? If I had the formula to it, I would not be here today. I would be retired on a beach somewhere um, with all the money I made from telling Dennis how to get big on Instagram because there is no formula to it. Um, it's all just experimenting and seeing what works. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that's worked for me in my practice before and afters, pictures of cute stuff, dogs and kids and stuff like that. Um, uh, what you see in the middle there is an excerpt from a review where it mentioned one of my hygienists, Colleen. Um, and so we took that excerpt, excerpt out and then Canva made a little uh, you know, image, um, dressed it up a little bit, took 45 seconds to do, and that's an easy post to do. And then team stuff, photos of your team, stuff with your team. That's all stuff that works out. Um, you know, And I'm also always trying different stuff and new stuff. Um, I've been doing stuff lately where I find um, stupid questions about dentistry on Reddit and I post a reel of me making fun of the question um, in kind of a trying to be funny way. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. You just throw stuff against the wall and see what sticks. But this is the kind of stuff that I think helps. Uh, befores and afters, big thing, no blood. You don't want any blood in any photos, ideally. People don't want to see blood. Um, cute stuff, kids and dogs, that always goes far. Um, you know, excerpts from your reviews, your patients say really nice stuff about you. Um, and so it's nice to utilize that in some marketing assets. Um, and then team stuff, team stuff always plays. Uh, people want to know about the people that work for you. Um, I think that's that's pretty well known. Um, so let's get back to reviews. And, and this is what I call the pyramid of success. So if you know anything about college basketball, you know that there's a, a coach, uh, head basketball coach at UCLA named John Wooden. He's probably the greatest coach of any kind of all time. Um, and he had what, what he called the pyramid of success. And this is the online review pyramid of success. If you can get a review in one place and one place only from your patient, and that's really all you can ask a patient to do is give you a review in one place. Google is a place you want it. It's by far the most valuable. It's the best. They don't, re they don't filter out reviews. Um, Google uh, works for any age demographic. Uh, those people look on Google, whether they're Gen Z, you know, millennials, Gen X, boomers, silent generation, they all look at Google. Um, doesn't matter if you live in a big city like Los Angeles or a small town like Waxahachie, Texas, like Google is still, you know, um, uh, the most important, whether you're North, South, East, West, cosmopolitan, rural, suburban, it doesn't matter. Um, male, female, young, old Google transcends all of that. It's the most important one by far. That's where you want it. Yelp is great, but Yelp filters out reviews from people who aren't regular Yelp users. Yelp is more important in cosmopolitan cities and college towns. If you're in, um, you know, um, I don't know, uh, Bayou Labakri, Louisiana, uh, probably not a huge Yelp town, that one. Um, but, you know, if you're in LA, Santa Monica, San Francisco, um, even like San Luis Obispo, like college town, um, you know, that stuff, Yelp probably works pretty well. Um, I, next door, uh, I hesitatingly bring up because if you've ever been on next door before, you know, it's like looking at your mother's Facebook feed. Like it's just the worst of the worst boomers being the most boomer possible. Um, I literally, before I got in here, had an email from next door and it was somebody in my neighborhood complaining that CBS cut off the end of piano man on their Billy Joel special because the master's uh, ran late or something like that. And it's just like, you know, they were just like livid over it. And it's like just insane. 
So, but, you know, Nextdoor does um, have around 47 million requests for businesses um, uh, in a year on their entire platform, which is a lot. The number one thing that people ask uh, for a reference for uh, or for a recommendation is a plumber. A number two is a dentist. So um, millions of people are on next door asking their neighbors where they go to the dentist. So that's why I think it's important. It's even above Facebook. Everything else is under that. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Although I do get a good number of patients from Instagram. It's pretty common. Um, but I, still, I think th those are the big three. But it's like it's a, a big three in the you know, weirdest way possible. And that Google is by far the number one. And the other ones are, are um, a fairly small number three. So, you know, if you, if Google reviews are the most important thing to getting patient flow into your business, like how do you get more reviews, right? That's what you're all asking. Uh, and I wish I had magic for you. It's not, it's, you got to ask, you got to ask your patients, you know, um, that's the only way this happens is you ask. Um, and it can't just come from the doctor. In fact, it, shouldn't come from the doctor. It needs to come from the team. Um, specifically for a dental practice, the hygienist is probably the one that has the best relationships with patients because they spend the most time with the patient in a given year. Um, but uh, everybody that the patient interacts with needs to be asking that patient for a review when that patient is happy. Um, and we have this mantra that we uh, use in our office that's never let a compliment go to waste. So patients compliment us all the time whether that be on, you know, hey, that cleaning was so gentle or I didn't feel that shot at all or, you know, that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be after procedure's over. Like anytime a patient says anything nice about us, we always say, thank you so much. If you would not mind sharing that experience with us on Google and then we give them something. I'll show you what we give them in a minute. Then we follow up with them later that day. That's it. That's all it takes. Super duper easy. It just becomes automatic to us at this point. Thank you so much. If you wouldn't mind sharing that experience with us on Google, it really helps the business. That's it. So when a patient uh, tells you, gives you a compliment, tell them, ask them, would you mind sharing that with us on Google? If a patient tells me they found us on Google or Yelp, I'm going to say something about it. Wow, that's great. That's really important to us. Uh, it's really where we find most of our patients other than personal referrals. Uh, I hope we earn your five stars today. And if we do, let us know on there. That'd be great. That's it. Always have a link on your website to your Google My Business page, to your Yelp page, those kind of things help with citations and they help patients find their way over so they can see your reviews um, and hopefully leave you one. Patient communication suite would be like, um, like what kind of what Rectangle does with like uh, patient confirmations, texting, things like that. A lot of those have some feature where it auto texts a patient for a, a review after their appointment's over, which is really nice. Uh, and then goodie bag insert cards. So, you know, when patients come to our office, especially for hygiene, they leave with something. Um, and when they leave, they get this uh, toothbrush with this card attached to it that asks them to share their experience with us on Google, which really does help. Uh, I really like this Google My Business Marketing Kit. This is something that's free that Google does. Simply go onto Google and Google this term, Google My Business Marketing Kit. You'll see the first kit there. You click on that um, and this is what it looks like. You just type in your practice's name. Um, and it will use your reviews. It uses AI technology to analyze your reviews and find sentences that were written in reviews about you that it thinks are good marketing. Um, and so when I typed it in, this is what it came up with, right? All this stuff is great. All this stuff is really great. You can use these as Instagram posts or Facebook uh, business posts or, or X business posts, right? You can use this for all that. You can use this um, uh, for um, you know little posters around your office like this. Um, this is a, a poster that you can make using the Google My Business Marketing Kit totally for free. You can have uh, them print it for you. Uh, you can uh, have a print shop print it for you. You can print it yourself, you hang these around your office. Like there's just a lot of cool stuff that you can do on there that's totally free that doesn't cost you anything. So I think that's all uh, really important. Um, I, I said we give patients something when they compliment us. Uh, this is also, also the same thing that you see on their toothbrush. Um, and this is just a little card that says, hey, we would love for you to share your experience with us on Google. Please go to bit.ly slash J-A-A-D-D-S-3. And, and feel free to type that into your browser now if you want to on your phone. Um, that's one side of the card. We've actually replaced these cards now. Instead of having my logo on uh, the one side, that's a QR code now um, because so many people now understand how to work QR codes. 
Um, and then the other side of the card tells them where they're going. And in case they forgot, five is my favorite number. Um, so if you type that in to your, um, if you type that into your, um, into your browser, um, what you'll find is that it takes them right to the spot where they basically just need to write in the number of stars and start writing a review. So it makes it really, really easy. It means that they're not having to like Google and find you and maybe finding the wrong place, um, you know, and, and making it hard for them. Like literally, it makes it super easy for them to get right where they need to go to leave you a review. So that makes it really, really easy for them. Um, if you want to know how to make a, that, that uh, link, I call that a Google short link, a GSL. If you want to know how to make that Google short link, uh, just go to this web address, bit.ly slash GSL video. That will take you to a YouTube video where I show step-by-step -step how to make that Google short link. So that way you can like watch step one, pause it, do step one, watch step two, pause it, do step two. And in three minutes, you'll have a Google short link that you can share to your patients to make it easy for them to leave you a Google review. The problem with using their normal Google link is it is this long and no one can ever type it out, right? So um, this just makes it way easier for people to end up where you want them to, which is on your Google My Business page where they can start typing the number of stars, hopefully five, and what their experience is. I'm going to talk for a minute about resilience, about what we do when we get a bad review. So the first thing I want you to know about getting a bad review is you have to be careful on your public response. Um, you have to keep it super generic, some stuff like, here at Joshua Austin DDS Family Dentistry, we value your feedback, blah, 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 blah. You cannot violate HIPAA when responding to a review. Even if the patient gave intimate details of what their treatment was and what went wrong or whatever, what they feel went wrong, even if they say, even if they spill all the beans there are, you can't talk about those beans they spilled. Um, that'll be a violation of HIPAA. So be very careful here. The reason I, this is not where you start with dealing with a bad review. The reason I bring this up is because this is one that will cost you money if you screw it up. And every month, uh, HHS, Department of Health and Human Services, releases a list of practices, dentists and doctors and therapists and optometrists and everybody in between that has been fined for violations of disclosing patients' PHI on social media. That's basically that, responding to somebody's review where you disclose information about their treatment on there and it'll be a 10 to 20 to $50,000 fine. So don't do it. That's the first thing you need to know. First thing is wait 24 hours because when you get a bad review, you are pissed. You're pissed. And if you respond when you're pissed, you will regret how you responded the next day. So just let it simmer for 24 to 48 hours, investigate, learn about what happened. And then when you're feeling better about it, then you go back and, and, and deal with it. First thing you do is reach out privately. Typically, you know who this person is. You have their phone number. You have their email address or, or how to get a hold of them. Call them, text them, email them and say, hey, sorry you had a bad experience. I read your review. I love to make it right. What can you do? What can I do to help? You know, that's it. Um, sometimes just know that some people are just negative and sometimes don't engage. Let crazy be crazy. And uh, I think that that makes a ton of sense. When I... Um, when I see a review that's like, you know, I don't know, like 12 pages long and just a rambling manifesto about how terrible we are. I, I would love it. I love it because a patient reading that is like, oh my God, that person's crazy. A prospective patient reading that is like, oh my God, that person's crazy. What I don't want is like a short, succinct like evisceration of me, like done in four sentences. Cause that's like, oh, like that person is sane and rational and not. So sometimes, man, just like crazy be crazy. Um, and I think that that makes a makes a, a, a ton of sense. So um, you know, I think it's it's best sometimes to just not engage. But I think all in all, it's best to respond um anytime you get a negative review, unless it's just unhinged and crazy. When you talk to a patient, you got to be respectful, polite, and thankful. Yeah, even though you're pissed, you may be faking it. You probably are faking it. You're doing it through gritted teeth, but still be nice to them when you get them on the phone. Acknowledge your feelings. I'm sorry that that's how you felt. I'm sorry that Cindy make. Uh, I'm sorry that you felt that Cindy was rude to you on the phone. You know, just you're apologizing for how they feel. Um, you know, that's a little bit better than apologizing in a blanket statement when nobody did anything wrong. Um, Sometimes, you know, a bad review can let me know that we're not doing something well as a practice and I need to fix something. 
So fix the system that's broken. Don't miss the forest for the trees just because you're angry at getting a bad review. Offer a remedy if and only if you screwed something up. But do not negotiate with terrorists. Don't give them something free just because they're complaining. But if there's something that legitimately went wrong that should have been handled differently or a ball got dropped or whatever, give them free bleaching trays, give them an electrical toothbrush or a water pick or something like that. Give them something to make them happy if you did something wrong. But if not, don't just give them something for free. But don't get into a debate, especially where patients can read it. Because who always looks bad? The big, bad, mean, rich dentist. Even though none of those things are true, that's how it's perceived, right? That's how we're always perceived. So don't get into a debate online, especially where other people can read it because you always look bad. Always look bad. Best thing you can do is drown it out in positives. Typically speaking, when people look at reviews for your practice, they're sorted by the recency. They're sorted by newest. So if you get a one-star review, make it your team goal to get seven five-star reviews in the next week. You can do it. Just ask the right patients. You know, ask the patients that are happy, which 95% of patients that leave our office are happy. Ask them. You get 10 of them in a week. You push that bad review down to page three. And it's, it might as well be Jimmy Hoff at that point. No one's ever going to find it. So um, that's the best thing you can do is drown it out in positives. So again, to review the coping steps, number one, uh, I always try to flag a review to be removed. So if someone leaves us a bad review, first thing I do is always try to flag it to be removed. If it's on Google, you go to the uh, Google My Business uh, page to do that. If it's on Yelp, you go to Yelp for business owners to do that. Just go to the review section, find the review. And at the bottom right-hand corner, usually there's a flag. Click flag, make up some reason why you think it should be flagged and send it off. They may delete it. And if Google or Yelp deletes it, you don't have to deal with it anymore. They're probably not going to, but it's worth trying because it doesn't cost you anything to do. Second thing, after that doesn't work, then I contact the patient. Email, text, call, hey. Sorry, what can we do to help? Is there any way I can make you feel better about this? Whatever it may be. If that doesn't work, then I respond publicly, but I'm careful not to violate HIPAA, um, making sure that um, I'm just letting people know that I care. Once I'm responding to a review publicly, my response is not for the person who left a bad review. My response, because I already lost that person. That person is not coming back. My response is for any potential patient reading it to let them know that I care. That's it. Uh, and then finally, like sometimes I just ignore them and leave them be. It's what I call the Reese's peanut butter cup phenomenon. Sometimes a little salty mixed with the sweet can be a very good thing. Um, if you saw a restaurant that had 5,000 five-star reviews and nothing else, you might question the authenticity of that, right? Like, is this real? So it's the same thing with the dental practice or any medical practice. People respond better to businesses that have four, seven, four, eight, or six, then they do a 5.0. So I don't mind a couple of them. Um, that being said, the ones that are bad, I'd like them to be the unhinged crazy ones. Um, but you know, as long as I have 10 good reviews for every 10 to 15 good reviews for every one bad one, the numbers are going to work out in my favor and we're going to be okay. The good is going to by far outweigh the bad. So, you know, I mean, I talk about this stuff, but I'm not perfect. I'm bad reviews, just like everybody. And here's one of my favorites that I've ever gotten. So um, I'm going to uh, read this review to you guys uh, just because it's kind of small. I want to make sure you can see it. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear this. But I'm going to set the stage with a little mood music. If you don't have, if you can't hear the music, um, it's Everybody Hurts by R.E.M. I said I'm a Gen Xer, so I stick by that. You know, we, we love everybody. We love R.E.M. as Gen Xers. Um, and I'm also going to read the review in the voice of the uh, that I think that or the voice of the patient. Right. So this is my impersonation of the patient. Booked an appointment as a new patient after reading all of the glowing reviews on here. The reception staff and premises were welcoming, however, I had a pretty bad experience with the hygienist. After repeatedly wincing and telling her that I had very sensitive teeth, she continued to dump ice cold water all over them. And like, do we really think that my hygienist dumped ice cold water all over her? Like, do we really think that's what happened? Like maybe my hygienist, it was like ice bucket challenge day, that thing from a few years ago, and we didn't tell the patient. Uh, or maybe uh, it was uh, my, like my hygienist didn't feel she was being honest with her medical and dental history. So she decided to waterboard her to try to get some more information out of her. But like, come on, it's easy to see, like we're already in hyperbole mode here from like the first two sentences. When she pushed the polish, her heart on my gums and it started to hurt quite badly. I again told her it hurt and she acts as if making it up. 
saying it's just the friction making it hot. It's not hurting you. I'm sorry, if something hurts, it hurts. And she's right, if something hurts, it does hurt. And I think we can all identify with the horrific pain and damage that can be caused by a profi cup and profi paste. I mean, really just a death trap, that thing. Like how on earth, how on earth could anybody endure such trauma? She repeatedly questioned me on whether or not I had fillings or sealants and clearly did not believe me that I had never had a cavity, just sealants. When she found a weak spot on one of my molars, she repeatedly pushed her dental tool into it, painful, going, well, you have a cavity here. It's fine that I developed a cavity, but there's no need for the attitude of disbelief regarding my previous sealants and no excuse for repeatedly causing a patient unnecessary pain. So I went back and I looked at her bite wings and she's right. She's never had a cavity, just sealants. You know, those amalgam sealants that apparently somebody somewhere used. I don't know. Like, I don't know how you could get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine amalgams if you've never had a cavity before. But I mean, I don't know. She said she's never had a cavity before, huh? I get my teeth cleaned every six months. And this is by far my most painful cleaning ever. I was also informed that I just told her four cavities, which considering I've never had a cavity in my life, is somewhat difficult to believe. At this point, I was pretty much their hostage. Okay, I'm not reading anymore. Hostage, hostage is the word that you use, hostage. I don't remember Kevin Spacey, the negotiator, coming in to break up this hostage crisis, okay? I don't remember the SWAT team rappelling through my operatory windows to try to rescue her, right? Hostage is the word that she used. Jump to the end. So sorry to everyone who thinks this place is so great. Maybe if all these mishaps aren't piled up, I'd be happier this practice. But I guarantee you right now, I won't be going back. And I think the kids today say something like, bye, Felicia. And I think that's what we all want to say to this woman. Now, one of my favorite features of Yelp is that you can look at someone's other Yelp reviews. So when I pulled up KP's reviewing here, I saw, hey, look at that. She's never left a good review for anybody. If you remember, she left me three stars. That's the best review she's ever given everybody. Despite the waterboarding, despite macerating her gingival with a profi cup, despite jamming an explorer in her gaping decay, despite the hostage crisis, yellow ribbon on my lapel to remember that one, hashtag San Antonio strong, hashtag never forget. Despite all of those things, according to her Yelp profile, that was the greatest consumer experience she's ever had. So what do you call someone who only leaves negative reviews, bad reviews? My mother would call her negative Nancy. Kanye would call her a hater. What do you do when you get a hater? As the poet Lord of America would say, you got to shake it off. Shake that off. Turn your attention to the good reviews. Focus on getting more of them and let the bad stuff wallow in the corner of your profile. Don't let the fear of getting a bad review keep you from swimming in the waters of good reviews because the advantage to good reviews is so significantly much better than the disadvantage of getting the one bad review every 15 or 20 patients. You need to care about this stuff. You got to care about your online reputation. Unlike Joan Jett, who doesn't give a damn about her bad reputation, you need to because this is part of owning a business and people are reading this. Prospective patients are reading this. And if you want more new patients, which we all do, this is where they come from. You need to ask your patients for reviews. If you ask and you make it simple for them, they will leave you reviews. And finally, unlike me, you need to react to bad reviews with a little bit of grace. Um, you guys can reach me anytime via email, jaustindds at me.com. You can also reach me anywhere on social media at Joshua Austin DDS, except for Snapchat because I'm 45 years old. And any 45-year-old man who's on Snapchat is up to some nefarious stuff. That's all I can tell you. Um, and I'm not on TikTok, because honestly, I take Lipitor. And they don't let people who take cholesterol medications do lip sync videos on TikTok. So really, Instagram is the best place to find me. Um, you can reach me there at Joshua Austin DS. Feel free to hit me with a follow. Um, feel free to send me a message if you have any questions. Otherwise, we have some time to do Q&A here. I think Jacob's going to handle the Q and A, uh, and then get you guys some more information. Where are we looking like uh, there at uh, home office? 
Yeah. So uh, thanks, Dr. Austin. Uh, getting some great feedback here. Really great presentation. So thanks for taking the time. Um, we're going to do some polling here. As mentioned before, we do need to do some polling to make sure everyone is paying attention. Um, so here we go. First polling question. Have you claimed your practice's Google account? Yes, no, or I've been meaning to get around to it. All right, we've got 60% participated. Give everyone a chance here to get these answers in. All right, so interesting. It uh, looks like 72% said yes. They have claimed their practices Google accounts and 17% uh, said no. So very interesting uh, results there. All right, let's do our next polling question. Do you find Yelp valuable to your practice? Yes, no, or we don't use Yelp. What do you think we're going to get here, Dr. Austin? I think it's going to be a lot of no. A lot of But no. I can tell you, I get, about, I get about 15 new patients a month from Yelp. So it's beneficial for me. But again, it depends on geography and what your patient makeup is. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, looks like we got most answers in here. So 24% said yes, 38% said no, and 39% said we don't use Yelp. Yeah. Very interesting. All right. And then our last polling question. Does your team ask your patients for reviews? Yes or no? And this polling question actually ties in with the question we got from the crowd here. So I'm going to ask that too, as well to you, Dr. Austin, before we pop off. So this one's pretty split, actually. Very interesting. So 52% said yes, mm. they asked their patients for review. 48% uh, said no. So very interesting. Cool. Um, and that question that I had from the group is, um, do you think incentivizing reviews, for example, a credit for a future treatment or another form of gift, a good idea to garner positive reviews. Yeah, I don't love the idea of like an individual pay for play kind of deal. Like I will give you this if you give us a review. I do like the idea of like a contest. Like if someone leaves your practice a review, they get their name into a fishbowl and you draw a quarterly for, you know, uh, a pair, you know, pair of AirPods or an iPad or uh, you know, uh, um, a massage gift card or something like that. I think that's probably, that seems cleaner to me. Um, you know, if you're going to do uh, the credit towards treatment feels a little, uh, questionably ethically to me, uh, you know, whether or not that is or not, I don't know. Um, but I think the idea of a contest does, you know, if somebody left, if somebody left a review, I wouldn't mind maybe sending them like a $5 Starbucks gift card or something like that. Because that's like what I would have done had they referred me a patient anyway. Um, like if they would have they referred me their neighbor, I'd send them a letter saying thanks and here's five bucks to Starbucks. Um, so that feels a little bit better to me. But like giving somebody like fifty dollars off treatment or something like that, that feels weird. Um, but I certainly don't mind a, a contest. Um, so I think all those things kind of work well. The other thing I love doing is incentivizing the team. So um, we constantly have like contests and stuff like that for the team of. Um, hey, the person on the team that gets mentioned in the most reviews next quarter gets two tickets to a Spurs game or whatever it may be. So I like that too, because that kind of helps the team driving uh, or drive the team to ask for reviews. So that's kind of my thought there. So I don't like the idea of like, hey, here's 50 bucks off your treatment. Um, but um, I do like the idea of, of um, incentivizing the team and or just giving a contest. Perfect. Great answer. Thank you. Um, with that, the CE is over. If everyone could stand for just two more minutes, just want to follow up with some housekeeping. Some of this was mentioned at the top of the um, top of the webinar, but want to make sure everyone has uh, what they need here. So um, if you did answer those polling questions and you, you were on for the duration, you are going to get those CE credits. So um, be on the lookout in the next two weeks um, for your email. And um, we'll be sure to get those to you as soon as we can. Recording and handout are going to come your way. 
um, sometime before the end of day tomorrow in our follow-up email. So be on the lookout for that. And as well, um, someone from our team will be reaching out um, to just follow up and see how things went. And then you're going to have a survey that's going to pop up here at the end. Please fill that out so we know how we're doing and can continue to provide the best experience for you. So um, just a quick background on Rectangle Health. Um, Dr. Austin mentioned a lot of things um, which were great and in addition to that, there's some things that you can take things to the next level by having our team cover it with our bridge engagement. So um, everything from automated surveys, um, texting when people leave the office, asking them to do a review. Um, we have text to pay through our uh, patient payment program. There's all sorts of different things that you can do. Um, so make sure you have the best resources available for your practice. So um, I have a link to a demo in the chat here. So if you're interested in learning more about Rectangle Health, if you're not already a client with us, um, go ahead and click that link to um, book in a demo of our patient engagement solution. And then also, you know, Dr. Austin mentioned, make sure you're HIPAA compliant with those um, online review responses. We have a HIPAA product um, for over 4,000 of our clients. And the number one question we get in terms of HIPAA is how to deal with online reviews and staying compliant. So um, very important if you need help with anything HIPAA as well, we're here to help um, however we can. And then we offer two webinars per month. Our next one is a really great presentation with Fred Joyle, who is the co-founder of 1-800-DENTIST. It's called Creating a Remarkable Practice, Communication and the Patient Experience. I have put that link to register in the chat as well. And then that'll also be in the follow-up email. So uh, make sure to register for that. going to be another great presentation. So like I said, Rectangle Health is here to help however we can. Um, so if you need help with anything in terms of HIPAA compliance, patient payments, um, or patient engagement, we are your one-stop shop. So um, with that, I want to thank Dr. Austin again for speaking with us today. Um, I'm seeing great stuff coming in already from the feedback. So thank you, Dr. Austin. And um, with that, everyone have a great rest of your Tuesday, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.